If you're a spiritual entrepreneur, you may be a, a healer or a coach or an intuitive, but you may have a smaller audience and still want a consistent flow of leads, of clients, of collaborations, you have an advantage that many of the big accounts don't. And that's what we're going to be discussing in this episode. But if you're new here, it's here and in the Serving Circle, of course, where we elevate consciousness. You help elevate consciousness through business success. That's what we do here. So if you're a spiritual entrepreneur and business owner, be sure to subscribe and let me know below what is your biggest takeaway from this episode. And the reason being is because although many people place importance and high priority on posting and leveraging their content, I'll ask you a question. Out of those who you trust most deeply in your life, who are they? Who do you like, know, and trust most in your intimate world? It's probably, from my guess, those who you spend the most time with and those who you've built a relationship with. And that's what we're tapping into here. When people ask how I've built my community that's growing to you know close to 2,000 members now, I rely heavily on personal messages. I rely heavily on, on my personal messages being heartfelt, building relationships over time, and that's the advantage that you have above the big brands. Now you're probably thinking, isn't that a lot of work? Isn't that a lot of different, isn't that a lot of different attention? And and how am I going to manage all of those messages? We'll get to that. You can breathe, and before you get overwhelmed, I'll walk you through exactly what to do here so that you can use your direct messages and personal outreach as a brand or as a specific arm of your lead generation. So what you're gonna learn here is one, how you can use this, how you can use lead generation and your personal messages as a way to create clients, leads, and collaborations. Two, you're gonna learn the four pillars that I've realized that make a very successful personal message to someone. Three, you're gonna find out what to do before you invite them to your stuff. And four, the key questions to ask yourself. The key questions to ask yourself so that you don't come across as salesy, slimy, and pushy. Let's dive in. So I wanted to put this together and the reason being is because I know a lot of people who are who are doing who are not only growing a spiritual business and growing from their from their heart and wanting to get out there to not only make more more impact but to create more income for themselves I realized that a lot of people are putting the majority of their marketing efforts towards their social media, towards their posts, towards things that they, um, that they're doing to, you know, leverage their, their audience. But when many people ask me, Hey, Tyson, uh, how is it you've built a lot of momentum within the serving circle, you know, within, within this, within this group and within your collaborations, how do you, how do you find these? And, and, you know, how do you, how do you sort of create this within your own business? I always come back to personal messages and the reason being is because if you don't have a podcast or an audience it's you know in the thousands or tens of thousands i believe there's an opportunity there that many people with a large platform don't have and if someone has a large platform and they can put out personal they can put out um a, a, you know a mass message to people that works for them because they have the numbers on their side, but people who don't have the numbers on their side to just reach all these, uh, these masses have the advantage of personally reaching out to someone and building a relationship heart to heart that many people don't have. And so one thing that I've always done is schedule time in my calendar each week to shoot out personal messages. Now this isn't, Hey, can you send me $20,000? Because I've got some, I've got a really cool program. As many of you know, I send out personal messages to people purely from my heart. Either it's just to say hi, uh, whether it is to invite them to something, or just see how I can be of service. Whether it is connecting people with other people, whether it is inviting them to other groups, 
you know, whether it's inviting them to other people's programs, whatever it may be, whatever I, on my heart I feel is, uh, is necessary to help them, you know, move in their, in their right steps. And so what I thought I'd do as I'm talking to a lot of my clients and people in my program, they have shared with me a challenge that I didn't know many people have. And that's how the hell do I do that? How the hell do I send personal messages to people? What's the protocol? What's the guidelines? How do I do this in a way where I'm not sleazy, where I'm not pushy, where I'm not annoying? But in fact, it's very heartfelt and it's very aligned. And how do I do that in a way that allows my business to, to unfold and build momentum as a byproduct? So I'm now putting together a big module in my uh, program and all about personal messages, all about how to use it as a way to build momentum, to um, find collaborations, to find leads and clients consistently. And I think if you have that as a, as a bit of a advantage to you, if you don't have a huge audience, then I'm happy to um, I'm happy to get some insight in terms of what I've learned in the last eight years of doing this. So I've got some slides for you. And if you're just listening on the podcast and you can't see the slides, then tough luck. No, you'll still get you'll still get the gist. Um, I'll explain all of it anyway. So I'll share my screen. As many of you know who have done the business. The Spirit in Business course, all my slides basically look the same. I use the same template. So this is what I have. So can everyone see my screen? Cool. So if you had not, it's great. And type in the chat as well if you guys have any questions along the way. I'm happy to open it up at the end if you have uh, to be have a bit of a Q&A and have this tailored to you specifically. So I'm happy to do that. But this is what I want to cover is the four pillars I've, I've highlighted that can really allow you to build a lot of momentum in personal messages and do it in the right way. And as always, bonus points to everyone who notices my typos. So these are the four pillars that you really want to have in mind when you're sending personal messages to people, when you're growing your business uh, by reaching out to your audience or any new audiences. So this may be people in your network or people outside your network that you're wanting to build relationships with that can eventually lead to friends. It can lead to collaborations. It can lead to partnerships and joint ventures. It can also lead to clients. So the first one is your intention, right? Your intention, your vibration, your energy. What is it that you're putting out? The second is the introduction. This is really what to say in the first interaction, the first few messages. What is it that you say? Next is the interest. It's in building rapport. It's in uh, building that relationship and allowing them to have interest, not only in you, but also show interest in what you're doing, how you do it for people. And then the invite. The invite is the ask. There are many things you can invite people to. You can invite them to Facebook groups. You can invite them to your um, webinars, you'll, you can invite them on, onto a sale call, which obviously is going to invite them into your program if it's a good fit. So there are many, these are the four, four key pillars to have in mind when you're reaching out to someone. These are like sort of little steps, but I'll go into these in detail and you can see how this uh, will help you on your business as well. So your intent, yes, where is your vibration? So what is your energy? What is your vibration during this outreach? So I've noticed many, many people have a, an intention when they reach out to me with a particular agenda. So who here has ever felt when someone reaches out to them that there's a very clear agenda to their message? Show of hands, who's, who's felt that? I know I definitely have. So this is really important because no strategy will make any progress if you don't first work on the inner stories, the inner beliefs, the energy that you have while you're reaching out to people and building relationships. So your vibration will come across no matter what you say. I'm sure you've had messages of people or a voice memos, whatever it may be, of people who have said very similar things, very, very similar things. However, you can feel intuitively that they're, 
energy was different. Their energy may have been uh, one that doesn't align with you, or the energy may have been one that does align with you. So this is really important to remember. And it's really important to notice that when people reach out to you, what is it that you feel, right? So what is it that you feel? And then also, what is the intent you're putting out there when you reach out to someone? Is your intent when you're reaching out to someone, oh my God, how do I say hi? And how do I, how do I uh, say how are you and learn about them so that they can buy my stuff? If that's the intent you have, it's probably going to come across. If you have an agenda where you just promote yourself straight away, it may or may not come across as pushy or salesy or manipulative or whatever it may be. But here's the question. What intent do you want to have? What's the intent? What's the energy? What's the vibration that you want to put out there when you're reaching out to someone, regardless if you've reached out to them before, regardless if it's a cold outreach, regardless if you, they're, you know, they're, your, they're your best friend. Have in mind what is the intent, what is the vibration that you want to put out there, that you really want to share, where they can feel that in your message. That's the key here. That's the, that's what, that's the first pillar of these foundations. And this is what I call the fear jar. So the fear jar is some, uh, an acronym I came up with, but it's where people get caught. And the fear jar is the acronym for their fears, their judgments, their attachments, and their resistance. And this is actually what I get my clients to meditate on before they start their day, before they start anything in their business, is to notice within them, where are my fears? Where are my judgments? Where am I attached to things? And where am I in resistance to life? So these are the key questions to ask yourself because that's going to highlight where is your vibration? Where's my vibration? What is the thing my mind fears most? So what are your current stories? What are your current fears with reaching out to other people? Do you have fears that I'm going to be pushy? I'm going to be salesy. I'm going to be perceived as annoying. What are your stories? What are, your, what are the things going through your mind? Another question here. What is the emotion that your mind may want to avoid? So when you're reaching out to people and you don't reach out to people, you'll always be avoiding an emotion. Whenever you procrastinate and don't do something, you're always avoiding an emotion. What is that emotion that you don't want to feel? Very, very key level of awareness. Another key quest, question we have down here. Do you fear being judged as pushy, salesy, annoying, or do you judge other people? Notice where you judge. Notice where you don't reach out to someone because they're like, oh, they, didn't look, they don't look like they can pay for my services. Don't pretend like you haven't been there. Do you judge them? Right? Do you judge them by looks or by whatever it may be? Now, can you notice attachments? Are you attached to a particular outcome? Are you attached to them responding right away? Are you attached to, are you attached to the outcome of them wanting to be interested in, in your stuff? Wanting to be friendly back to you? And where are you in resistance? This is really where your mind says life should be different. So where are you in resistance to life? This will give you a very, very good understanding of what's coming up in you. What internal conflict can you start to notice, hold space for, and start to heal so that when you do send messages out to people, it will come from a place that is your vibration of intent. If, you, if you're not familiar with meditating and, and doing these inner healings, I do have other, uh, other programs, other um, videos on YouTube. I do have a complimentary course for everyone in the serving circle called Spirit in Business. It walks you through exactly how to feel to heal. So all of this stuff is in there. Um, 
completely free for you guys. So I might even, I'll put the links to that. I know many, many people in the serving circle, I think almost uh, 160 people have gone through that um, spirit in business course, huge amounts of, uh, of feedback where people are just sending me messages in and just blown away by what happens when you actually start to feel this stuff and start to heal it rather than avoid it. So I'll put, I'll put all those in the show notes as well. Moving on. Authenticity is a very, very big piece here in your vibration. When in doubt, go back to authenticity. When in doubt, be authentic. Because here's why. Your heart knows how to sell. Your heart knows how to connect. Your heart knows how to do everything. We just have to listen to it. And when you move the stories across and you do the inner healing, it'll flow through. Right? It'll definitely flow through. I'm sure you can feel even with me right now, I don't have any agenda here. I love doing this. I love showing people and teaching people and coaching people. And I don't have any agenda here on what you, how you take this, on what, what you do with it. That's not up to me. But this is just me and my heart flowing through. Because this is what happens when you take time to do the inner work. So depends on your authenticity and who and what you are deep down show some aspects of being goofy or sarcastic or fun or passionate or playful or whatever it may be in your messages be authentic when in doubt be authentic and even checking out their profile support their stuff right support their support their posts share love in their in their comments and really support them especially if it's cold outreach, especially if you haven't reached out to them yet and they don't know you, you don't know them. Truly be authentic. If you can say a joke in your uh, first message, that can be your challenge. Say a dad joke. I love my dad jokes. But what's going to allow that, what's going to allow your vibration to flow through is the key question. Moving on. Introduction is the next pillar. Now I've got very, very basic things here. I go more in depth uh, with all these other slides that I've got, but I thought I'd just put this here and explain a bit about it. Because when you're in your introduction, this is the very first, uh, the very first couple of messages that you send out to someone. There are two key factors with that I've highlighted that can really move people uh, forward with that conversation or not. This is where you either lose people or you don't. One is the context. What's the context in which you're meeting someone or sending them a message or engaging with them? The context is a very, very big piece. And here's why. When someone messages you or you message them, what unconsciously goes through their head is why the hell am I talking to this person? And it goes through this risk versus reward process where they say, hey, engaging in this, in this conversation and continuing this relationship, is it risky? And if it is, the rewards need to outweigh the risk. If the risk outweighs the reward, I'm not going to continue with this person. But if the reward outweighs the risk, I'm going to continue the conversation. Now, you may think, what is there to risk? Well, let me tell you. Well, let, let's see. Let's see. In your perspective, if someone messages you and you don't know who they are and they say, hey, how are you going? Is there some internal risk with continuing that conversation? There may be a little bit. Because you're like, I don't know this person. Are they going to just keep talking to me? Let's say if you don't know someone and they just keep talking to you and you're like, hey, how are you? And they're like, yeah, good. And then they ask you questions like, how's the, the weather? How's the weather going in wherever you live? And you're like, it's great. It's awesome. And they're like, cool. And they're like, how many, how many kids do you have? What are you thinking in your head? Why now is this person talking to me? <laughs> Where is this going? How long is it going to last? Are they going to lead? Is it going to lead to something? Is it going to lead to another is it going to lead to an offer or something that's um, 
something that's more risky. So putting you in an uncomfortable situation or your energy, your time, and your effort is at risk. Now, that's if the context is very cold. Now, what if the context, if I say, Crystal, I'm going to connect you with Trish. She's incredible. She's been a big part of the serving circle. She's, she's an amazing person. I'm going to connect you. And then I connect you, with, uh, I connect you with Trish. And then Trish sends you a personal message saying, Tyson connected us. He's amazing. I love his ginger beard. But hey, we're here to, we're here to talk about yourself. And uh, let's see how we can help each other. Very, very different context. Very different context. Instantly, you understand there's reward there because I've, I've given Trish a bit of a wrap up and it seems like you can help each other. So very, very high reward, very low risk. Therefore, the conversation can move forward quickly. You can introduce each other to other people. You can uh, add each other to your Facebook groups or introduce people to you know, other hosts on podcasts and do all these different things because the context is different. The context is warm. The context already has clout. It has, it has some credibility and authority. Now, inviting people to your Facebook group, to, your, to a sales call, to your freebie and your email list may not be so easy if it's a cold outreach, if it's very, very fresh, if it's very new. There's too much risk there, right? Depends on the context. The number one thing to remember here is make it easy for them to continue the conversation. Make it easy for them. That's why I, when I started this process of reaching out to people who I wanted in my network, I started with that one power question. The one power question that I realized works and is so genius is who can I send your way? Who can I send you that would be an ideal client or a key source of collaboration? And why? It makes it very, very easy for them to see the upside with very low risk. Because what's in their mind? If they're a business owner, they're thinking, how do I get more clients, more collaborations, more leads, more referrals? That's what's going on in their head. So I said, okay, what's a way in which I can make that so rewarding for them? Very, very low risk. Easy. That's the question I asked. And I just got incredible response rate and i actually started connecting people they actually started falling in love with me and the value that i gave and it was very very little effort on my behalf and all of a sudden i had these collaborations with people here in melbourne who are 10 years my senior in business who are doing millions of dollars in in some joint ventures and partnerships and then i got free tickets to their events and i started meeting all of their friends and then there you go i just started asking that same question to everyone i started meeting very, very high reward, very low risk, very easy for you to do. But this is the sort of thing I had in my mind. Moving on. How cute is this dog? Apologies for everyone who's just watching on the podcast and they can't see the photo. But this is the next pillar, the third pillar I call interest. And this is when you start the conversation, you've had the initial conversation, now you're starting to build interest in each other. You're starting to build rapport. You're starting to learn more about each other. And for those of you who are just listening on the podcast and you can't really see the picture I have here, it's an adorable dog. It reminds me of the guide dog Lola that I had, uh, who I raised for 18 months. And that's just what it reminds me of. So I put it in there. So this is where you build interest and you do it by being genuine and curious about them. Who here has read How to Win Friends and Influence People? It was one of the very first personal development books that I started reading. This is a big tip, big, big tip, and a, a, a something that we can forget because we love talking about ourselves and we love sharing about how awesome we are. But sometimes we can forget the thing that builds the most rapport is having genuine interest in other people, clear and genuine interest in other people. Be curious about them. When you're curious about them, you'll find information that's so valuable that you go beneath the surface in a conversation, right? 
So these are the sort of things, these are the four key tips you really want to have in mind when you're building interest is one, be genuine and curious. Two, focus on adding value. Three, match and mirror. And four, share your messaging talking points. So I'll explain these. Yes, of course, be genuine and curious. I'm sure you all know how to do that. Anyone who doesn't know how to do that? Okay, great. I can't really see everyone on the screen anyway. So if someone raised their hand, I apologize. But have that in mind. What are some key questions you can ask them? What are some fun, playful questions you can ask them? What are some questions that you can just truly just be in a space of, of awe about where you are, where you are, where they are, how you connected, who you can connect them with, interests you have in, in, in common, whatever it is. And then simply add value. Now, this isn't necessarily adding value in terms of your, your specific ask and invite, but it's adding value in terms of connecting them with other people or adding value in terms of sending them some resources or some tips or guidance or advice. There are many, many ways we can add value in a conversation. And there are some things you want to have up your sleeve to sort of say, okay, if I'm genuine and curious about this person, what are their challenges? What are their problems? What are their outcomes that they want to achieve? All right, what are those roadblocks that they're currently, uh, they're currently running up against? And then how can I help out? How can I help out? How can I send them a video? How can I send them some resources? How can I um, just jump on a call and do like a little bit of a free session? Or how do I... How do we um, jump on a call and brainstorm some ideas? And while you do that, while you build a, while you build rapport, having in mind this third practice around match and mirror. So many people who have studied NLP will know this. Matching and mirroring is a key way in which the unconscious brain builds rapport with someone. So matching and mirroring means that you match and mirror, you match and, and follow what they're doing in terms of their language, in terms of their body language, in terms of their uh, the tone of voice, in terms of their gestures, their breathing, whatever signal you can get from them, even through text message, you can, you can um, have a very similar energy, very similar uh, language, asking very similar questions, right? especially when you're on the phone and especially when you're on Zoom. One thing that I have in mind all the time when I'm jumping on a coaching call or a connection call or whatever it is, whenever someone just jumps on, on Zoom or on a call, I always want to have my energy either match them or even be slightly above. A little bit of a tip. If your energy is slightly above, then unconsciously to them, there's, there's very little risk with continuing the conversation in that way. But if you're lower, if your energy is lower, um, they almost unconsciously see you as bringing them down. Sort of a harsh way to explain it, but when you're out interacting with people, we're not interacting with many people in person nowadays, but notice the difference. If you interact with someone who you don't know, and go up to them with the same amount of energy or a little bit more, notice the difference between what happens compared to when, if you go into a, a situation with a lower vibe or a lower energy, notice the difference in responses. Now, this is a big topic around match, matching and mirroring, but that's just the key understanding is that if you match what their, what their energy is, what they're doing, what they're saying, their body language, their breathing, Whatever signals you can pick up on is going to go a long way to building uh, rapport. And one sort of thing that you need to have in mind is this isn't manipulating. I don't, I don't describe it as manipulating. I describe it as adapting. If you're not doing it so that you can manipulate them, but you're doing it because who and what you are is flexible and you would love to build rapport with people. And in order to do that, you can have a skill set of your adaption. 
I'm sure you have many, many skill sets, many, many sides of you that are playful, that are passionate, that are curious, that are, that are loving. Knowing which side of you to bring is a skill set. It's a resource. It's not manipulation, but it's adaptation. Now, while you do this, we go to the fourth point here under interest is to share your messaging talking points. If your messaging talking points are all about your business in terms of who you help, what problems you help them solve, what outcomes you help them achieve. They're the real, they're the real foundations when it comes to your messaging, when it comes to your business. So while you're building rapport with people, how can you introduce them to your messaging talking points? How can you introduce them to who and what you are about your business, who and what you are about who you help, how you help them, what makes you unique, what makes you uh, have a unique vehicle, what's unique about your experience, whatever, whatever that may be. So that you're building this, you're building rapport, you're building interest, you're having genuine interest in them, you're already giving value, you're matching and mirroring, but then you're also introducing your business. There are many, many ways in which you can do that. And that will depend on the context. So it may be in the very first one or two messages when I connect Crystal and Trish, they're instantly going to ask, hey, what is it that you do? Now that may come a little bit later with, with an outreach of someone who doesn't like, know and trust you yet and you're learning about them. So, hey, let's jump on a conversation. I think we might be able to get along. I think we might be able to uh, collaborate in some way. But first of all, I'd love to know about your journey. It's well before it might be a little bit down the road that you start asking about their business, who they help, how they help them, all those different things. Moving on to the invite. The invite is the last pillar, the fourth of the pillar. Now, once you've built rapport and they're interested in your offer, for example, what can you invite them to? So if they're interested in your business, if they're interested in what's going on in how you help people and how you help them, ask yourself the question, what makes the most sense depending on what you have learned about them and feel about them? That's what you're going to invite them to. So if they're interested in your expertise, does it make the most sense? Learning by what you, by learning what you know by asking about them and being curious, are they a great fit to go straight into a, a, a sales call? Or do you invite them to your Facebook group? Do you invite them to your freebie or your whatever you have as a lead generator or a lead magnet? What makes the most sense depending upon what you've learned so far? And just your instinct. Use your intuition. What makes the most sense? I'm sure we can all feel what makes the most sense. Is this making sense? This part isn't necessarily rocket science, but what you might say are things along the lines of, hey, if, if you have this problem and you want to achieve this outcome, this is what I've helped people with in the last however long, and you can share a case study or a testimonial or whatever it may be and say, hey, if you think, it's a, if you think this is a perfect fit for you, do you want to jump on a call and have, and have a chat about it? Or if you're looking to overcome this problem and meet these sort of people and be involved with this type of energy of people who are solving this, this challenge, do you want to jump in my Facebook group? I'll introduce you to this person, this person, this person, and um, I do lives every Monday or Tuesday and we tackle these very things. Now, once they've got to know you, once you've built rapport, once you've already added value, I'm sure you can see there's, very, there's now lower risk with them jumping into your invite and higher reward. Now, it's not even risk versus reward. It's perceived risk and perceived reward. What is it they perceive? 
But now that you've built rapport, you've got to know them. They've seen that you're an awesome person. The perceived risk is lower. The perceived reward is a lot higher. So what is it you can start inviting people to? You might have an invite that's lower risk, such as a Facebook group or an ebook or a lead magnet of some sort. Right. So for example, I've got the spirit in business course. That's an invite of mine. It's very low risk because what I have there is a course that's complimentary. So it's free, but it's also um, perceived as very, very high value. Not only because a lot of people have gone through it and benefited from it. And it's got a lot of case studies and testimonials there, but the ask there is to say, Hey, here's what you're going to get for free. It's complimentary by being in the serving circle. But also uh, what I ask is that only once you get the value from it, only once you have a transformation and breakthrough, could you send it to someone else and share it with someone who would enjoy a similar benefit? The risk there is all on me and the risk there is all on the, the course providing the transformation. If there's no transformation, they don't have to share it. They don't have to do anything with it. That's why it's very, very low risk, but it's very, very high reward because the pressure's on the value, the, the, the pressure's on the transformation. So what is it that you can offer someone that's very, very low risk, very, very high reward, and also have some sort of tier system of what you can invite someone to depending on the, the responses you get from them and the vibe you get from them of what they need most. I forget what my next slide is, but let's have a look. Key questions. So this is summary, sum, summarizing everything. So you have some key questions to just remind yourself of, write down some answers and, uh, and have this as takeaways and insights so when you reach out to someone, when you're sending your messages, you have this in front of you. So number one, summarizing. What is your intent? If you just have... One, two, three words. What's your intent? I want to be connected. I want to be loving. I want to be authentic. I want to be genuine. I want to be interested or curious, whatever it is. Write down your intent. Where do you notice yourself in the fear jar? Once again, that's the fears, the judgments, the attachments, and the resistance. These are everything. I'm not going to go into it because I'll go on for two hours. And all my clients in the group coaching program know that it's very, very possible. But when you ask yourself, what is it I fear? Where are my judgments? Where am I attached? And where's the resistance? Gives you very, very good indication of what you need to look internally at, hold space for so that that can heal. And only once that heals will flow through you, your true intent, your true authenticity. Which leads us to question three. How can you be more authentic? How can you be more authentic? I started sending now with my personal message, I started sending the, uh, the dancing emoji. So I'm always dancing. I'm always dancing around the house being an idiot. And I just started introducing that sort of energy into my messages. And thought it was, and it's, it's fun. It's playful. It's, um, it's definitely something that I want more of. And many people want more of. So how can you be more authentic? How can you be more open? How can you be more vulnerable? How can you be more honest? How can you portray that in your messages? Question four, how can you make your interactions less risky and high reward? Always ask yourself that question. What is it that I can engage with here? How can we engage in a way that is very, very high value, very low reward? Whether it's reaching out to someone in a cold email or a, or a cold message where they don't, know, they don't know you yet or whether you uh, interact with someone first on, in their Facebook groups, on their messages, on their, on their comments, and then you send them a personal message. Or what is it you can talk about? What is it you can discuss? What is it you can mention? That's going to be, allow things to be less risky. Like if I, if I don't know Beth and I reach out to Beth and I say, hey, Beth, how are you? There's, some, there's a little bit of risk there. 
But if I reach out and I say, hey, Beth, we're in this, uh, we're in this uh, Facebook group together and, and Lindsay uh, mentioned you and I'm friends with Lindsay, I thought I'd reach out and say hi. Less risk there. Assuming I'm telling the truth. We're just going to assume that. Now, what's your, the question five is, what's your messaging and offer? You need to have a very clear message, very clear talking points about your business so that it's very clear, very simple. And you need to have an offer that I would describe as irresistible. If you have an offer for your business that's irresistible, it just builds so much more momentum and so much more uh I guess it, it allows for your business outreach and your messages to lead to so much more. Because I don't know any successful business owner who doesn't have a great offer. Everyone's got a great offer. Question is, what's your offer? Everyone in, in my program knows we spend a hell of a lot of time working on your messaging and your offer. Because that's they're the key pieces. That's what's going to lead to all your outreach and all your marketing efforts are going to mean so much more. You're going to be able to leverage that a lot when you have a clear message and an irresistible offer. Question six, what would you like to invite them to? Just have a few, have a couple things that you can invite them to, whether it's a freebie or an ebook, land, you know, a, uh, a Facebook group, uh, you know, invite them to listen to a podcast or a YouTube video or something, um, invite them to a strategy session or a free session or what event are you running? All are going to have, all are going to have different levels of risk, different levels of reward that are perceived. And it's all going to depend on the context in which you're interacting with them, in which you're going to judge what you can invite them to. making sense is helpful lisa looks like she's ready she's like hell yeah so one other question and this is the key one i don't know why i didn't have it in here but it's in there now key question by learning what you've learned here how many people do you feel called to reaching out to each week How many conversations do you feel called to make each week? Doesn't necessarily need to be new people. I've, I'm going to have this in my, my bigger module. Is There's a difference between people who are already in your network and people who are not in your network. And you can divide that time depending on what goal you have. But if you, if you have time in your calendar to reach out to 15, 20, 30 people, each week, whether they're in your network or not, and just getting conversations, rocking and rolling. <clears throat> That's what I recommend. Have a goal, have a, a guideline in mind. And when you do, stick to it. Put time in the calendar. I have time in my calendar, generally at the start of the week, to reach out to new people, see how they're going. I send you guys in the serving circle messages all the time, just saying, hey, what's up? How are you doing? Who can I connect you with? What can I send you? How can I help? Even if it's just sending a few love hearts and a dance emoji. That's what I do. And my intent is just to be of service. My intent is just to connect. My intention is to see, see me in you and know that we're all connected from a place of love, a place of unity. That's my intention. You can guarantee as soon as you reach out to me or we jump on a call or we do something, I'm always just taking a breath beforehand and seeing myself in you, seeing you in me, knowing we're all connected on this journey and coming from a very, very heartfelt space. So there are all the slides I have. That's it. Does anyone have any questions? Does anyone feel like they wanna send me a message? <laughs> everyone everyone all right 
Well, let's put in the chat. Let's do this quickly. Put in the chat, how many people moving forward are you willing to reach out to? How many people each week, whether it's starting with five people or whether you want to up the ante and say 15, 20, 30, 500, how many people are you wanting to reach out to each week to build this momentum, to build this skill and to help, to help build this, to help build this? Five people, 11 people, five people, 20 people. Lindsay also loves the link to the soul. Yep, I'll, I'll send it to you. We have 15, three people per week. Great. Awesome, we excited? Now, when you do this, you'll find it to be an activity that's one of those activities that leads to 80% of the outcomes and results. So many people focus on their, their posts and they're wanting their posts to do all of the magic. I find this is where all the magic is. While you're building engagement with your posts, while, they, while you're building up your audience, while you're doing all of this, having this, this time in your calendar to reach out to people personally, get on the phone with them, build rapport, see how you can help, see how you can collaborate is really where all this, this is where I build my momentum. And so if you're wanting to, if you have any more questions, reach out to me and ask. Uh, happy to help with some extra guidance. Um, but does anyone have any questions? Feel free to raise your hand if you have any, any particular questions here. So I'm happy to stay on for a little bit longer if you like. No, you're good. Are you all? You're all on your phone sending messages. I can see. <laughs> Taking notes like mad. You caught us. <laughs> I did. I caught you. Had. <laughs> taking notes. Taking notes. Well, thanks for being here, guys. I um, I hopefully hopefully this has helped. Hopefully this is going to help build some momentum as time goes on with for you and your businesses. Um, Thanks for being here in the serving circle and jumping on and, and engaging. And I love, I love the fact you're all here doing some, uh, doing some work. So thanks for being here. I'll see you guys same day, same time next week. If you're jumping on the uh, collaborative calls, but it's uh, been a pleasure. If you want to unmute Thank and say so goodbye, much. feel free to do so. Thanks Tyson. This was thanks, awesome. Tyson. Thanks, Thank Tyson. you. Thanks for sharing Tyson. Thank you. Have, Have a good night, everybody. See you later. Bye, Bye everyone. Thank you. Bye.